Hi, thanks for joining me. My name is Megan. I live in Calgary, Alberta, Canada. I can't believe it's Friday again and time for another Friday Sews. Usually I film these videos on Thursday, but I woke up this morning and I thought, oh, Thursday. Okay, I have to do a bunch of stuff and realize that it's actually Friday. So I'm going to try to uh, film this, edit it and post it as quickly as I can so that you can still watch it on Friday. Um, today has been like, I'm a little bit frazzled today. I have to be honest. Uh, it I woke up this morning and it was snowing again and so I had to walk my daughter to school and I didn't do my hair before we left and uh, just that it was too late if you have like curly wavy hair you understand the it, it, the window closed so here it is and I threw on a sweatshirt because it was cold and then they're doing concrete construction work at the building across the street from our apartment like right outside the window so I had to wait for them to stop drilling and sawing and if it starts again my apologies but anyway my window was short and I didn't have time to get dressed and do the full uh, you know the full look but I also think it's important for me to represent myself authentically and I am a working mom of two little kids and this is what I look like a lot of the time. So I'm wearing um, a Megan Nielsen Jara sweatshirt that is admittedly a size too small for me. Uh, if I make it again, and I might, I will go up a size. Um, it fit last year and it, it doesn't fit quite as well this year in the sleeve, but anyway, it's cozy. I made this with a sweatshirt fleece from Loiseau Fabric in Calgary and it has been washed probably 45 times. Like honestly, I do wear it at least once a week. And so it's comfy. I got a matching rib knit on it and um, the, the Jara sweatshirt is a fantastic pattern. I made three of them last year. One for myself, two for myself, and then one for my sister-in-law. And um, it, it's a great sweatshirt pattern. Big fan of that one. So anyway, I just have a couple things I wanted to share with you today. Um, I have been humming along on my blouse pattern. So I'm working on the Love Notions Lyric um, blouse, which is a dress and peplum pattern. And I'm hoping that I'll finish it tonight. So last night I sat down and I did all the buttonholes on it. It's been a while since I've done some buttonholes. My machine has a four-step buttonhole, which is great. I, I wish it had an automatic buttonhole. I wish I just had to sit down and, and it just, the magic happened, but that's not the case. Um, and buttonhole like alignment has always been not my strong suit. So anyway, I was working on, I'll grab it. So this is the fabric, it's a beautiful rayon. Black fabric, black thread for my black buttons. It was nighttime. I was just using the, the low light I have in here and the sewing machine lamp. And um, my husband said to me afterwards, he's like, didn't you say that the buttonholes were like the last step on the garment? It was you were really intimidated because if you screwed that up, you'd screwed up the whole shirt. And I was like, yes. He said, so you didn't screw it up? And I was like, no, I screwed it up. It's fine. A couple of my buttonholes are like, are not in a straight vertical line. They, they veer over a little bit too too far on the placket but it's okay no one is ever going to notice except for me and you guys because i told you so anyway stay tuned for that next week um, i'm going to try to put the buttons on using my sewing machine which is something i've never done before and if that does not go well i'm going to practice if that does not go well then i'll sew them on by hand tonight while we watch uh, the falcon and the winter soldier or my husband and my daughter play nintendo or something but i really want to get this finished so that i can um, enter that so April blouse competition and also so that I can wear it because I'm, I'm pretty excited. I knocked off a blouse that I saw on mod cloth. So um, I, I think I think it's a good, I think I, I did pretty good with this one. I, I'm really excited to share it with you. The other thing I need to do this weekend is, is wash a bunch of fabric. So um, now when I bring fabric into my home, I almost always put it directly into the wash and wash it. Uh, before that, I didn't always wash the fabric before I used it, which is bad, I know. Um, and it scares me because I used to work in a museum and we did a lot of like conservation work and we had a moth infestation once and that was, it was bad. Um, and we don't get moths, like wool eating moths here in Canada, at least to my knowledge in Calgary, but like textiles come in off of all kinds of different conditions and you really should wash them before you put them in to the, the fabric storage with the rest of your beautiful fabrics. but. I did not. So anyway, um, I have three fabrics and I know that I finished the cut edges on one of them, which is, leads me to believe that maybe I did wash it, but I'm just going to wash these three fabrics together. I have three cuts of uh, like just basically a polyester crepe. So um, this one is like a cute ditzy floral print. It's been in my stash for about four years. 
This is another polyester. It was called peach skin when I bought it. It's like just a, it, it's kind of, it feels like rayon, but it's not rayon. Um, and I have surged the edges, so I think I did wash this, but I'm gonna wash it again. And then this is a, a crepe polyester that I have quite a bit of um, that I bought from Craftsy a, a number of years ago too. All of these are really old, old, at least four years old. Um, so, and this one, I think, I want to make this into a dress. I have enough here to make a dress, so I just have to figure out which one I'm gonna make. And I think it's really, it's a really pretty. If I thought maybe when I bought it, it was deeply discounted, which is why I bought it. Um, I wasn't sure that the colors were great for me, but it really reminds me of an apron that my great-grandmother had. My great-grandmother passed away before I was born, but my grandmother had her apron, and to be honest, I think I have it now. My grandmother's also passed away. But it was these colors, this like violet and dusty green, and there was something about this that really spoke to me, so I'd like to do this. I think inspired by this week's episode of The Sewing Bee, so not a spoiler, but um, they had them make button-down dresses, and I find that to be a really, like that sweet, vintage, sophist like that style really appeals to me right now. So I think that's what this will turn out to be, but I haven't quite picked a pattern. There's two patterns I really like from a company called French Poetry, and the, the Etoile dress is one, and the Pleiades, Pleiades dress is the other. Um, forgive my pronunciation. Anyway, um, the unfortunate thing is that I'm out of the size range for both of them. They have a pretty small size range. My bust is just within it, but my waist and hips really aren't, and I'm not sure that I'm up to um, grading that pattern up either of them. I just, I feel like it's a lot of risk, um, a lot of work. And at this point in my sewing journey, I don't think I want to spend my time doing that, but I think I'm going to look for a pattern that's sort of inspired by that. And there's the concrete drilling in the background. So my apologies. So anyway, I think that's, that's what I'll do with these, these fabrics, at least these ones. I'm going to make a blouse with the, the larger print navy floral, and I think a dress with the other one too, but we'll see what happens. Um, talking about new patterns or patterns that I've had my eye on lately. Um, I, I bought myself this book from um, Kenneth Wong from Itch to Stitch for Christmas and I've paged through it a couple times but I haven't traced off anything or put anything on my list but I was giving it another look and, and seeing what patterns are in here that I could use to sort of spruce up my um, summer wardrobe as I get ready to, to think about maybe going back to the office um, or you know just just what I want to wear right now. Um, so there's a couple in here that I think would be really cute. The Palermo, I'll also try to get some better photos, but the Palermo is a, a peasant dresser top, but it's got a raglan sleeve. So um, I'm not the hugest fan of a raglan sleeve. I've never made one in a woven, but we'll see how it goes. Maybe I'll give that a try. Maybe I'll find something else. And the other is uh, a pattern that I, I spent an absurd amount of money on. And this was... I'm almost, I'm, I'm actually embarrassed, but I did want to share this with you because I, I see a lot of reviews or pattern haul videos on YouTube and on Instagram from um, sewists in the United States when they have, when they go to Joann's for their big $1 pattern sales. And I always comment that I'm really jealous um, and for, it's for two reasons. Uh, one, Simplicity doesn't sell patterns in Canada anymore, um, so we can't get them. And I, I find the Simplicity patterns really appealing. Maybe it's the fact that we can't get them, but... I find their designs to be quite nice. Um, and the second is, is we definitely do not have $1 pattern sales at fabric stores in Canada. So even when the McCall's or the Buttrick patterns or the Vogue patterns go on sale, they go on sale for like $9, $12, sometimes $7 instead of $20. So I don't buy a lot of commercial patterns. The ones that I do have, I got free with um, magazines, like when I subscribe to Love Sewing Magazine or have been given them. Um, or pick them up when I was in the States myself. But anyway, sometimes I do order Simplicity patterns online. If there's something I really have my eye on, I'll order it through Amazon. Um, but I was, after the sewing bee two weeks ago, they were talking about the buffet dress. And that's a like peasant style, bohemian, loose flowing woven dress. And I just I got an idea in my head and I couldn't stop thinking about it. And then, um, Lots of the different sewing media I, I follow were showing pattern suggestions if you wanted to make that style. And this one came up. It's the Simplicity 8872. 
um, dress. This one, I think it's a couple years old, uh, 2019 maybe. So it wasn't released this year, but I just, it was exactly what I wanted. I wanted something with both a short and long option, um, a one ruffle on the bottom, so not like three tiers of ruffles. I wanted a bishop sleeve option or something else, and I, I just, I needed it. <laughs> I needed to have it. And um, I spent 27 Canadian dollars having this pattern shipped to me off of the seller on Etsy. And uh, when it got here and the, the sort of the haze cleared, I thought, oh my goodness. I probably could have found an independent pattern for much less and had it printed, um, but I didn't. So anyway, I did crack into this. Um, my bust measurement fits into the pattern. My waist doesn't, my hips don't, but it's a free flowing um, skirt. So I don't think that matters. And it's shaped with an elastic in the back. So I think I can also adjust that to make the waist fit me. It's really simple. It doesn't have any closures. It's got a facing um, on the neckline. So I think that I'm gonna give this a try. But my challenge to myself is to find enough fabric and I'm gonna need, I think, three and a half or four meters of fabric for this just to be safe because I am tall. I'm gonna wanna add some length. Um, I'm gonna try to find four meters of fabric to make this that is less than 27 Canadian dollars. So I'm gonna have to hit the bargain section at Fabricland pretty hard and be um, pretty creative in my visions of what the fabric in front of me could look like. So. Anyway, that's my challenge. That's going to be for my wearable toile or wearable muslin for this dress is to not exceed a budget of $27 because I feel like, um, yeah, that's probably, it, it stung when I realized how much money I had spent on this when you could probably buy it at Joanne's for a dollar. And if uh, my family, the borders are closed right now and travel, as you know, is not recommended um, because of COVID. But if, if my dad was in Arizona, I could send uh, my dad's girlfriend to the sewing store. Like she's a seamstress. I could send her to the store with a list of pattern numbers and I know she would go get them for me. So I could have waited a year, but I didn't. So anyway, this is the pattern I'm gonna give a try. Um, one of the things on my list of projects to make in May, and I can't believe it's almost May. So um, hopefully the, the construction outside my apartment ends soon so that I can film a video to show you what I made in March and April. I have completed all of the projects that were on my spring sewing plans list. And so it's time for me to start making another one and start digging into the, the patterns I also outlined in my Make 9. So if you haven't seen either of those videos, go give them a look. Um, if uh, you have any ideas for me about different dresses that I could try that are in like a slightly more inclusive size range that still have that feel of those French poetry patterns. So my bust is 43, upper bust is 40, my waist is about 37, and my hips are, depending on the day, between 48 and a half and 51 inches. So um, sort of in that, you know, I ride that line between, um, on a lot of blocks between their standard size block and their plus size block because my bust is not I'm a sewing C cup, not a D cup. And so, you know, it's easy to make an adjustment. I shouldn't complain. Like I am within a, the range and most of the time I can find a pattern that's gonna fit me. And I know that's not the case for a lot of people. So I shouldn't complain about it too much. But anyway, those French poetry patterns aren't gonna fit me. So I'd love to hear if you have seen anything lately that's got maybe a little bit broader of a size range that still has that, that vibe. Um, what are you working on this week? What's going on in your life? I hope you have some time this weekend to do some sewing or do some dreaming about sewing. I have a trip to the fabric store planned because it's my husband's birthday this weekend and I need to go pick up his birthday present. And the store I'm buying it at happens to be within about three blocks of the fabric store. So I will be making a convenient little stop off there. Anyway, I hope you have a wonderful day and I will see you again soon.